Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Sorry for the couple false starts here. It seems, I don't know, OBS has changed the way this works since the last time I did it. As soon as I hit, as soon as I connect to the stream, it just takes me live, which I wasn't quite prepared for. Usually I have some time to set everything up and get things going. So a uh, couple false starts as I figured out what the hell I was doing wrong. So if you saw me staring at the screen with my mouth open, drooling, I apologize for that. Let's see here. I'm going to give it just a minute for people to join in here and just double check, to make sure that everything's so working correctly. Staring at the screen. It looks yeah. like it is. Sounds good. All that. So uh, I don't imagine we'll have very many people watching. It is 7.15 on the East Coast here. So that makes it pretty early on the West Coast. Maybe maybe some of my, my friends over in Europe will be up and uh, around at this time. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Uh, so I was going to plan this for a video, but I actually have about three videos already scheduled and ready to go for the next three weeks. So I didn't want to put this that far out. So I decided we'd just do a little live stream today and see how that worked for us. I hadn't done one of these in quite a while. So what we're going to be doing here is actually taking a look at this Google landing page that I have pulled up or blog posts that I have pulled up. So I actually found this article here. Uh, and was looking at the design of this and really liked it. But one thing that stood out to me right away was this key takeaways area, or it just says takeaways. Essentially, it's kind of the too long, didn't read section of this blog post. So for somebody who might land on this article and isn't sure whether this is important to them or not, they can look at these key takeaways here and get the main gist of the article. So I think this is a pretty cool uh, feature for user experience. I'm sure that users enjoy this as much as I do. When I landed on here, I could get the gist of the article pretty quickly. But I also think it might be a good benefit for SEO as well, since you have kind of the bullet point list of everything that's included in this article. So what we're going to do today is recreate this system. We're going to set up some custom or a custom field that we can then put into our blog post template and style it up with a little bit of CSS. And then we're going to actually, I'm going to share a chat GPT prompt that I put together to actually grab these key takeaways from articles. So we'll go grab a fake article or a, a demo article off the internet, put it into our chat GPT prompt and get it to display some of these takeaways. So let's talk about what we want to set up here. Essentially, I want to have a field, a meta field inside of all my blog posts that has kind of the takeaways section. So this way I can include those takeaways if I need them. And if I don't include them, they won't show up on the blog post. So that's one of the features that I want to make sure is in here. I also want to display all these takeaways as a list. Now I did jump in here to start inspecting how Google, you know, all the semantic HTML for this, but this page is actually quite strange. Like none of these headings are actually headings. In fact, there's zero headings on this article. Uh, so I'm not sure this is a great example of semantic HTML, but my thought was this takeaways actually needs to be a list. It's essentially an unordered list. So we're going to develop this as a list. And that's actually going to help us out here as we create these custom fields, because this would be a great use case for using repeater fields inside of our blog post template. But generate blocks won't actually render those repeater fields on the front end. So we actually needed a different way to be able to put this information in the blog post. And since we want this to be a unordered list, we're actually going to be able to combine those two things and come up with a pretty cool solution here. So what we need to do first is just go into ACF and set up our custom field for this. So let's jump up. Uh, actually, let me show you what I've set up so far. So. Uh, here on my demo site, we can see this is just a demo here. I've kind of recreated this blog post layout. It's not exact, but it gives us a pretty close representation of what they have here. I have my little takeaways headline here, but I don't have any of my takeaways in there. So we'll be able to jump in here to this blog single post content template and get those all set up. But what we need to do first is actually go into the back end here of the website and head over to ACF field groups. Now, I already have a field group here for my post, so I'm just going to reuse that to add this takeaways custom field. So we'll go ahead and go in there and edit that. I actually needed to set up this subheading for the way this blog post was laid out. They actually have this like subheading underneath all the articles that doesn't fit inside the text here. Anyway, so I had to already set that up to get the blog post template working. So what we need to do here is go ahead and add a new field. And what I'm going to want to use is a WYSIWYG field. I want to use this because I actually want to create this unordered list inside here. And we'll just call this uh, takeaways. Uh, let me go ahead and capitalize that so it looks pretty. And then we can go in here. Let's see. I know there's a way for us to... 
Okay, so for the toolbar, I'm gonna change this to basic and I'm gonna turn off the show media uploads. Some of those things are just precaution if clients ever get in here and uh, wanna start adding these takeaways. I wanna try to help out with that. Um, we might come back in here and actually add some custom instructions, but let's just get everything working first. So we'll go ahead and hit save changes here. And now if we go into post, all posts, and we edit this Google Pixel post, and we'll scroll down to the bottom. We can see now we have this section for takeaways with this WYSIWYG field. So essentially what I wanna do is just grab these three takeaways here. I'm gonna copy that text. We're gonna go back into the back end of our post and paste it in. You'll see it's just pasted in as plain text. But actually what I wanna do is have this as a bulleted list. So I'm just gonna click that bulleted list button and we'll go ahead and hit update. So at this point we now have this bulleted list inside of our blog post, the data is all there. We're just not rendering it anywhere on the front end, which is where we need to jump into our single post template and get that all added. So uh, I do see we have a few people watching here on the stream. So if you have questions or you're not sure exactly what I'm doing, go ahead and put those in here. I am watching the chat here. Um, all right, so we're gonna jump in here to our single post template and we'll get things set up. So over here, I'm gonna open the structure view here. I have this takeaways headline. I actually wanna wrap this takeaways headline and the takeaways list that we're gonna put in here inside of a div because I actually want to show and hide that dynamically, which we're gonna do with the block visibility plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this takeaways headline and click add to container. That way we're wrapping this inside of its own little contained div. We can control everything all at once. Underneath that, I'm just gonna add another headline block We'll change this to a paragraph tag. And here under the dynamic data, we're gonna enable that. And we're gonna change the content source to post meta. And we call this takeaways. I think takeaways. Now I have to remember takeaways, plural. All right, so take aways. All right, let's go ahead and update this and go take a look at this post on the front end and just see if we have everything actually rendering now. All right, perfect. So if we scroll down now, we can see those three takeaways we set up are rendering on the front end. All right, so the next thing we need to do is actually style this more like what Google has here, which is kind of these borders on the left, no bullet points and all that. So the best way for us to do that is actually gonna be to add some CSS. So I'm just gonna jump back into this post template, click on this headline, and we're gonna give this a class. I'm just gonna call this uh, takeaways just to keep everything consistent here. We'll know exactly what we're working with. Go ahead and hit update. And now we can jump in the customizer to start writing some CSS. All right, additional CSS. I do have some stuff I already wrote for the rest of this blog post here, but I've just moved it out of the way to make it easy for us to focus on what we're working on. All right, so what we wanna do first is do our takeaways and we're gonna target the unordered list because we need to get rid of some of the default styling. So by default, it should have a margin left on it. We're gonna change that to zero pixels. Doesn't look like it's actually targeting it. So sometimes when you use um, paragraphs or lists or anything inside the WYSIWYG editor that's inside dynamic data, it actually kind of nests things a little funky. That's something I've been meaning to reach out to Tom at Generate Blocks about. Uh, but I think we can solve that by using a plus symbol next to it. So this is just gonna grab the UL, UL that's next to this takeaways. Um, in fact, let's just go ahead and take a look at that because I know that's gonna be very confusing. All right, so I'm gonna inspect this page here and we'll scroll down to our takeaways. And we'll see here, we've created a takeaways class on a paragraph tag here, but it's actually empty with this UL underneath it. So I'm guessing this is just anytime you have just a blank UL in here. Um, it's actually putting the class on this paragraph, which there's no paragraph in there, and then this unordered list. So what we're having to do to kind of work around that, like I said, that, that seems like something that shouldn't be happening. So I'm sure there's a fix for that. But what we're gonna do to circumvent that is use this plus symbol, which is just gonna grab the UL, the unordered list next to the takeaways here. So we can see when we do that, this is getting rid of that left margin here inside the UL. And then the other thing we want to do is just do the list style and change that to none. And that will get rid of the bullet points inside of our list. All right, now we need to uh, target the actual list items. So I'm going to do takeaways again. We'll have to do our plus trick and we'll do the ULLI. 
So first thing I wanna do is I wanna space out some of these. So I'm just gonna give them some bottom margin. So each one will have some bottom margin. So we'll say margin bottom 16 pixels. Now we probably don't want the last one to have bottom margin, but in this context, it's really not throwing off the spacing or anything. We could go back and rewrite this to say, you know, not the last child, but in all honesty, I think the extra 16 pixels here is not a problem. Now we want to do a border left and we're gonna do this four pixels solid. And I've gone ahead and grabbed this color that, that Google's using. So we'll just go ahead and use that too. D3E3FD and that'll give us that nice, nice light blue color there. All right, and then we just need to give ourselves some space in between that border and the text. And to do that, we're just gonna do padding left. And I don't know, we'll keep it consistent here with 16 pixels. That looks pretty decent. Now, the only other thing I wanna do as far as styling this is this text size and this text size is the same. I wanna see here, yeah, see on Google's real example here, the text size for the body copy of the blog is bigger than the text over here on the side. So I actually wanna make this text smaller. Now we could go back here into our blog post template. I have a global style set up for smaller body text and we can go ahead and hit update on that. We can publish our changes here. I think that's all the CSS we need to write. And when we exit out of this, we can, yeah, now we can see this font size is a bit smaller than that. I still think that's probably not enough difference. Um, let's see what our extra small, I think I'm afraid that's gonna be too tiny. I think maybe it's just that their body copy is bigger. So the, uh, the difference is showing there. Actually, it doesn't look like that global styles affecting it. So we might need to do this in CSS. Uh, those global styles might not be capturing the UL that's kind of next to that paragraph there. So let's just go ahead and jump back into the customizer and we can write a little bit of uh, CSS here. All right, additional CSS. We'll go in here to our LI and we can do font size. Maybe we just do one rim. That'll make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we do even a little bit smaller than that. 0.9 rim, I like that better. So that just makes sure that the this text here is a little bit smaller, doesn't take up as much room, uh, cause we kind of want to de-emphasize that, but make sure it's there. All right, so let's go ahead and jump out of here now. And we're gonna have to deal with showing or hiding this based on whether or not we actually have takeaways in there. So a good example of this is, let's say you decide you want to add this feature to a website that has a bunch of blog posts already. Uh, obviously all those blog posts you already wrote don't have the takeaways in there. So you can of course go through all those blog posts and add all the takeaways, but chances are you're probably not gonna go back through every one. So what we wanna do is just hide this entire thing if that takeaways field is empty. So that's why we wrapped this in a div because we wanna actually remove the word takeaways too since we don't wanna see that if what's underneath it is blank. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like now. I do have another blog post on here. I don't think it's got uh, quite a bit in there. Okay, perfect. So you can see the takeaways headline is still here and that empty space is here for, when those, for where those takeaways should be, but we don't actually have takeaways in there. So in this scenario, what we wanna do is remove that word takeaways as well. So we're gonna use the block visibility plugin to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like here. I already have it installed, but block visibility. So this is the plugin here. Um, oh, it looks like I don't have it installed, so perfect. Uh, so this is by Nick Diego. This is an absolutely fantastic plugin. I put this into my starter site and I use it on just about every single build I do. So now that we got that installed and activated, we can go back here to our single post template and refresh it. All right, so let's pop open that list view again. We'll grab this div that goes around our takeaways and takeaways headline and the actual takeaways. And we're gonna scroll down here to the visibility tab. I wanna make sure that that's uh, visible here. It looks like it should show up. I know it shows our little logo in the corner. All right, so I'm gonna hit uh, plus on the visibilities and we're gonna do this with the ACF integration. So uh, block visibility has direct integration with ACF and that's what we're gonna use here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the field that we want to base this condition off of. And we wanna base this off of this takeaways field. All right, so what we're gonna do is say, if this takeaways field has no value for the current post, which the current post is great, then we wanna hide it. So we're gonna 
you know, switch this toggle to say hide this when the takeaways has no value. So this little visibility section is now saying, okay, on this container, go ahead and hide this entire thing if the takeaways custom field has no value. So let's go ahead and update that. We can go back to our posts here now for this uh, other sample post I had in here. And when we open that up, we can see the takeaway section is completely gone. We've completely removed that from the page, but if we go back to our um, pixel example that does have the takeaways, the takeaways is there. So that dynamic condition thing is working perfectly. All right, uh, so yeah, so this is, I think, all set up as far as the WordPress side of it, but let's talk about how we can actually get these takeaways. Obviously, going through all your blog posts and reading it and then writing three bullet points is, huh, it, you know, it'd take more time than it's probably worth, but I think this is a great example of where ChatGPT can be really helpful. This isn't something that we're worried about, you know, uh, having extremely unique content on. It's not you know, writing an entire post for us, but it is going through a post and then giving us some key takeaways. So let me show you what I've written up here as a prompt. This is kind of a starting place and uh, we can always uh, play with this if it doesn't give us the results we want. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a text editor here so we can look at this a little bit bigger. So this is the prompt I wrote. I said, I wanna give you the content of an article I wrote and I want you to write three to five key takeaways. The key takeaways should be short, just a simple sentence, bullet point style highlights of what people will learn in the article. Here's an example of key takeaways from a previous article I wrote. So then I just pasted in here these three key takeaways from what Google's done, just to give it a sense of what these should look like when they're completed. Then it says, please use a similar style, format, length, and tone for the key takeaways you write. Please write key takeaways in first person, which is actually an edit I had to do to this prompt earlier because it was writing it all in third person and it just didn't fit very well. And then I have, here's my article with a colon. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna go to the admin bar just to grab a article so we can see how well this works. Let's see, articles. Um, I know this one is super, super long. We'll grab this uh, one from Mark Westgard. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all this. We'll copy this text and we'll go back here into ChatGPT. And here at the end of our prompt, I'm just going to open quotes, paste that entire article in and close my quotes and press enter. So it shouldn't take but just a second and ChatGPT should come back here with, oh, of course, unusual activity. We'll try it again. It shouldn't take but a second and it should come back with their takeaways for us and we'll see how well it does. All right, so this article, while it finishes writing them, this is an article that Mark Westgard just wrote for the Admin Bar's website where we're talking about spam defense for WordPress forms. And he goes into different ways you can protect your forms. So web application firewalls, uh, validation, honeypots, captchas, and cloud-based services. Just to give you an example, if you haven't read this article, uh, we do go into detail on all those different things, kind of the pros and cons of those. So that should give you uh, in uh, a little bit of context on... Um, what this article is about and if ChatGPT is doing a good job of, of doing our bullet points. So I actually asked ChatGPT to give us three to five. That way we could kind of pick the best ones. Uh, so it looks like it did give us five here. So I recommend a multi-layered approach to combat spam in WordPress forms, including web application firewalls, validation methods, and captchas. That's a pretty good one. Now, now I kind of feel like my first person is not great in this, uh, this context. So that might be something we have to play with. Uh, I advocate for using both client-side and server-side validations to enhance user experience against security, against form spam. This one's okay. Uh, that's not really the final recommendations we made, so we might not use that one. Honeypots, Cloudflare, Turnstile, HCAPTCHA, and ReCAPTCHA are effective tools I suggest in I suggest for differentiating between real and real users and bots. One's okay. Uh, I emphasize the importance of privacy in spam defense, highlighting concerns with CAPTCHAs like reCAPTCHA uh, and the benefits of privacy-focused tools. I do like that one quite a bit. Uh, Cloud-based services like CleanTalk and Akismet, along with the OpenEye moderation service, are my recommendations, recommended solutions for unobtrusive and intelligent spam filtering. That wasn't quite the takeaway we had from that article. So like ChatGPT usually is, it gives us a good starting place but doesn't give us everything we need. But let's go ahead and grab a couple of these. So I'm going to grab this first one, which I knew we liked. We'll go back to this blog post. And we're going to add these key takeaways to this blog post I already had here. So uh, 
our first one was this um now now i feel like third person makes more sense um i don't want to say like the company but we is i think is better so we recommend a uh, multi-layered approach all right let's go back to ChatGPT here and I think this one about the um, the privacy concerns with captures that is something we went over and might not be something obvious to people right away so we'll go ahead and add that in here we'll say uh, we emphasize the importance of privacy and spam defense okay that's good and then let's see our last one here. Now we don't have to have three, we could just have two, but I think three looks nice inside of there. All right. Um, you know what, actually inside this article, and this is just cause I'm familiar with it. And this, I guess another good example of kind of how I'll approach using ChatGPT. use it to get some ideas and see what it does. But often I can't just copy and paste exactly from it. Uh, Mark actually highlighted two things that he thought were uh, the keys for what he uses or what he will put on his forms, which was Cloudflare using it as a uh, web application firewall, and then also using turnstiles. So here under our captchas, we have turnstile. So maybe we just write a third bullet point here that is based on uh, those. So we recommend using Cloudflare as a WAF and turnstile as a captcha to prevent most spam. So that's kind of kind of the high level overview of what you're going to learn from this article anyways. So all right, uh, we'll go ahead and highlight all that. We're going to change that into a bullet pointed list and we'll hit update. And now when we view this on the front end, remember it hid away those takeaways a minute ago because we used the block visibility plugin to hide that when that field was empty. But now that it's there, we actually see these key takeaways are here with the ones we just entered in. So it's a, you know, it, it's not an automatic way to do it. I don't ever find that ChatGPT gives me exactly what I need out of the box, but I think it's a pretty good start and at least gave us two and got our wheels turning on the third. So uh, a pretty nice little way to do that. Now, a couple of little things. Um, the way this blog post template is set up, I didn't find a great way to use this responsively. So um, I'm trying to remember if I already hid some of this stuff. So we have our, our long form content here. Uh, and this is inside, let's see, a container. And then we have one, one container here and one container here for our sidebar. And so these are set up as flex and go next to each other. The problem is, is I kind of want to move this key takeaways maybe under the subheading when it's on mobile and tablet probably. And then on desktop, I wanna leave it on the sidebar. So because these are in two separate containers, I, I can't think of a good way to do this naturally. And maybe y'all are smarter than me and can give me some suggestions. But what we could do is just go ahead and grab this key takeaways container here. And we can go over here into the advanced settings and we can hide this on tablet and on mobile. And we'll go ahead and copy this entire container and we'll go here maybe just above our content. I'll we'll have to paste it in underneath and move it up. So here underneath or above our content and we can go down here to advanced and we can hide this on desktop but show it on tablet and mobile. If we do that, update this, um, I guess before I refresh, let me just show you what's happening. So we'll see what it was doing before. I think before I was just hiding it. Um, so once it, oh, actually there, it's not even hiding it. So uh, I haven't even set up the responsiveness on those two columns yet. Uh, so let's see here. We'll go to tablet and we'll say, okay, this left container here, we'll do, actually we can just turn this to column and that should take care of it. And this, we can change the sizing to a hundred percent make sure that's a hundred percent on this other one perfect all right so we'll go ahead and update that now we'll have to see um i see your suggestion here make the parent flex direction column then order negative one on the takeaways yeah i was i was thinking about that but i have i have these related stories that i don't want to inject in here like i want the related stories to be down at the bottom of the article but i want the takeaways to kind of in inject in between that subheading and this text so I couldn't figure out a way to just like 
take it out of this container and move it over here into this container. Let's go ahead and refresh this now. And what we should see, uh, if I did this right, is this version in the sidebar disappears as we go to tablet and it gets injected here and this related stories goes to the bottom. So as we get down here to our tablet, we can see the takeaways now is just before this article text. It's actually, I think I have a max width on here. So we're gonna have to uh, auto align that, auto margin it. Uh, but it did put it in the right place. And if we go down to the bottom, we can see our related stories here. So let's just jump back into our single post template again uh, for this left container with our text. Once we're in tablet, we have a max width of 60 CH. So what we're gonna do is just do a margin of auto on the left and on the right. And that will just center that text in the middle of the blog post. So now if we go back here and refresh, now our key takeaways and all the text here is centered inside that article. So that looks pretty good. I don't love having, I don't love having the takeaways inside the template two different times and having to manage that. But like I said, I wasn't sure exactly how to get that to move from one place to the other in this particular layout. So, you know, sometimes I'll avoid that by just the way I lay out a blog post. Uh, if I know that I'm going to have that challenge. In fact, why don't we see what Google's done here? We'll go ahead and go to our inspect tool. And look, they've done exactly what I was thinking here. They've moved that key takeaways up there, but I'm not sure exactly how they did that. I'd have to dig into that a little bit uh, deeper. They might've had to do the same thing I did because I'm not sure what kind of magic you could do to, to move it around. Let's see, Bento stack. Ah, uh, you know what? They could probably if you used grid, you might be able to move those around grid for the whole blog post uh, and have each one of those items spanning different amounts. That could work. Anyways, probably not necessary for this or, or the purposes of this demo, uh, but I thought it was a pretty neat little solution for putting those key takeaways in blog posts. I can definitely see myself adding this to, uh, in fact, I did add this. We'll go back here to uh, the admin bar we can see I've actually added the same thing here to our blog post template. So key takeaways, we can see showing up here in this article. But like I said earlier, I didn't go back and do this historically for all articles. So if we go here to one of these older articles, that key takeaways actually isn't showing. All right, uh, let's see. We've been going about 30 minutes here. Not too bad. Got this done. Uh, Blue the Red Panda, I appreciate all the comments here. I'm glad this live stream worked out well as far as the time for you. I know this probably wasn't the best time for everybody else, but uh, we did it just for you. So let's see, uh, you said that you love this idea. I'm glad you like it. I thought it was pretty neat too. It stuck out to me right away. Would you be open to sharing your blog post single template? It's looking mighty sexy. Would love to have a look at how you built it. Yeah, I'll definitely consider that. I would say come back and check this, this live stream post maybe in a day or so. As you can see, we already found where I had issues here. It's not completely optimized. It was good enough for a demo, but uh, I wouldn't put it into production. So maybe I can get that fixed up. And if I do, I'll just put it into the uh, a link to that template in the description here. You will have to have uh, generate blocks Pro and generate press premium for it. Uh, and then the block visibility plugin, which you saw I just installed uh, from the repo. All right, well, that is enough for me today. Uh, I haven't done a live stream like this, a, a demo live stream in quite a while. So apologies for all the false starts and being a little bit rusty, but hopefully we learned something new in this. I'd appreciate it if you, if you made it this far, hitting a thumbs up on this. And uh, let me know if you find anything else you'd like me to try to recreate and generate press and generate blocks. That's what I'm always on the lookout for. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All right, bye-bye.